Biology here and welcome to my latest video. Now this video is slightly different as it is filmed inside my lab at school. So I'm using an IPEVO, IPEVO sorry, visualizer. Um, the camera and microphone are, are not all that good and now there's the unfortunately some of the sound is a bit crackly but you'll get the general idea. Um, and this video really looks at how to produce an uncontaminated culture and also use aseptic techniques to test different antibiotics. So I hope you enjoy it. And here we go. Right. OK. Hello, everybody. My name's Dr. Biology, and this is the microbiology uh, experiment. So this is required practical uh, related to culturing of bacteria. So what I have here is uh, agar. Okay, so this is molten agar. And molten agar is really hot and you need, to, you need to heat it up so it's a liquid. Okay, and you can easily just spread it onto this thing here. And this is called a Petri dish. So I'm gonna just place the Petri dish down. I'm just gonna place the agar straight in Okay, make sure it covers all of the base like that. Now, agar is a really useful substance. Agar is a nutrient jelly and it's a nutrient broth um, and it's really good for growing bacteria on. So there we go. So I'm going to put that one over there for the moment. And here, this is what it looks like uh, when it has solidified. Now, I'm not going to open the lid. I don't want to contaminate um, the agar with bacteria in the atmosphere. Although, because our laboratories are so clean at the moment, uh, there won't be many bacteria, which is good. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now write on the base. Okay, the reason I write on the base is and you never write on the lid because if I drop it, the lid can come off. But if I write on the base, then I'll know what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, and we're going to do two things today. Well, first of all, um, I'm going to spread this, nu this nutrient broth, but this broth contains E. coli. I'm going to write that down, see if it writes on here. Let's see. So, I bet you it's upside down. So, E. coli. Yeah, so E. coli is a bacteria uh, that is used in microbiology quite a lot. It grows very quickly. Uh, does anyone know what E. coli can do to you though? What kind of problems can it cause you? Yes, Freddie? Isn't it like with the stomach and stuff? Yeah, so it can cause diarrhea and vomiting. So we've got to be very careful when we are doing anything with it. So what I have here is a spreader and what I'm going to do very carefully is open, partially open the lid. So I'm going to open here. Okay, now before I actually place the E. coli in, I've got to light my Bunsen burner. Okay, so let's just turn it on. So here comes the gas. It's not very good gas. There we go. Just give it a moment to sort itself out. I don't think it's been uh, actually lit for about six months. Okay, so there's my Bunsen burner. Now, the reason you use a Bunsen burner, can anyone think why I would use a Bunsen burner? What's the purpose of a Bunsen burner? Yeah? Does it like kill any other bacteria that are around? Brilliant. So it kills any other bacteria that might be around. So what I've got to do first of all is I've got to flame. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to flame the top of the um, bottle. This is called a McCartney bottle, nothing to do with the beetles. Okay, and I'm just killing any um, bacteria that I don't want because I want an uncontaminated um, sample. So there we go. So I'm just flaming the top. It's not brilliant. Usually you need a roaring flame, but there doesn't seem to be much gas around at the moment. So there you go. Okay. So I'm just going to wait one second. I'm going to move that out of the way, put it on a yellow flame without burning my visualizer. OK, so now I'm ready to pour into my uh, dish. OK, so before I pour in, well, yeah, I'm going to pour in. So I'm going to place, I'm going to open the lid very slightly. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to pour in some of the broth with the E. coli, and I'm going to make sure that it is spread around with the spreader like that. Okay, there we go. So there, there's one, and then I'm going to do it in the other one as well. So I'm going to do two samples today. I'm going to spread it again to make sure it covers the whole of the dish. Okay, right. This spreader is obviously got bacteria on it. So what I need to do is get a beaker of disinfectant. There you go. And I'm going to stick it straight into the beaker of disinfectant. So I'll move that out of the way. Right, so I've got my two areas. I'm going to just put the lid back on the E. coli, put that to the side. Right, so what we're going to test for is we're going to test some antibiotics. So what I've got here is actually some A-level stuff uh, that we're going to use today because I thought it'd be more interesting. Okay, and what we're going to be looking at is uh, what we call sensitivity rings. So hopefully you can see that so we're going to look at things like ampicillin uh, erythromycin penicillin streptomycin tetracycline so we're going to test quite a lot of different antibiotics today so the antibiotic ring comes in a package like this okay so there we've got the antibiotic ring and i need to get a set of tweezers now before i even touch those I need to ensure that my tweezers are disinfected so again I woo, I use the Bunsen and I'm going to flame my tweezers okay so just ensure that they are free of any bacteria and they are aseptic so that means aseptic means that they are sterile okay good so I'm going to put that over there and I'm just going to place into one of them one of these discs okay so there we go and I'm just going to very slightly open it place it into the area dip it down and there we go and then we are going to test another type of test we're going to use um, this uh, piece of equipment okay so this is a disc and this disc contains streptomycin and this disc in here contains penicillin okay so I'm going to just place the disc very carefully there's one that's the penicillin and the streptomycin there you go all right, I am going to flame the tweezer. So I've flamed the tweezer. So I'm just going to make sure that they're down there. So P is for penicillin, S is for streptomycin. So we've now got our two samples. Okay, and hopefully uh, they are ready for lift off. Right, okay, here's the agar plate I prepared earlier. And you can see it's now solidified. Okay, and so bacteria can on that right i'm actually going to spread some bacteria on that as well so we've got two um agar plates they've got uncontaminated cultures and they've got antibiotics in them okay now what we're going to do is we're going to leave them for 24 hours like an oven at about 25 degrees celsius all right and then hopefully tomorrow's in tomorrow's lesson be able to see how effective the um, antibiotics are on E. coli. Thanks for listening. Right, okay, so uh, this is day two, so this is after 24 hours, and what we've got is our three 
um, agar plate. So the first agar, well, the first thing I'm going to say to you is that yesterday I forgot to tell you that we needed to put two bits of sellotape on each of the lids just to keep the lids in um, in place. Um, I didn't seal the petri dishes because if I seal the petri dishes, I'm going to stop oxygen getting in there and I can actually grow some really dangerous microbes. Um, so I'm going to show you the first one, this this one here, it's very slow, but there we go. So this one here was the one that I spread the agar on yesterday. Uh, you can see pretty much it's uncontaminated. Okay, so there's no um, other cultures there. You can just see it's kind of a dark grey. Can you see that? It's kind of a dark grey colour. That's the E. coli that has been spread inside it. Okay, so you can see there's, there's no contamination whatsoever. Right, so uh, what we need to do is we need to look at our results. So here's the one I did earlier. Okay, and you can see, hopefully you can see, uh, we've got, uh, so we have on this side, myosin, and on this side is penicillin. And I'm going to draw around them where there is a clear zone. So the clear zone is basically the area where the bacteria have been killed. So penicillin has slightly worked. Okay, so that's P for penicillin, S for streptomycin. Right, can anyone tell me, wait a minute, a bit of a delay isn't there? So observing that, which is the most effective antibiotic for um, E. coli? Yeah? Um, streptomycin. Something. Streptomycin. Let's call it S at the moment. So, yeah, so streptomycin. Why, why do you say that? Um, because there's more clear space around it. Yeah, there's a larger clear space. Now, we can do observations like that, but also because we're scientists, we need to measure the uh, kind of zone within which the bacteria have died. We can't count the bacteria because there are literally millions of bacteria. So what we do is we take a ruler. Okay, so here's a ruler. Can you see that? There you go. And um, we measure in millimetres the size of or the diameter of the circle. So I'm going to go from there to there. I'm going to measure that out as that is 31 millimetres. Okay, and then because it's not perfectly circular, I'm going to go from another direction here across. So that is 25 millimetres. And then I'll do the same for the penicillin. Okay, so across there, that is 10 millimetres. And across the other way, again, that is 10 millimetres. Good, so we've got two measurements. We can now find the mean. So to find the mean is 31 plus 25 divided by 2. Well done. Very quick. Excellent. So I'm going to go 28 millimetres. So that's the, the average or the mean diameter okay and then this one 10 plus 10 well that's easy so that's 20 divided by 2 so that equals 10 millimeters so we now have two distances okay so what we can do now is we can now work out the area of the circle so what you need to do is take pi r squared and that will give us the area of the circle Okay, now, um, so let's use penicillin. So that's penicillin and that's the streptomycin. Penicillin is 10 millimetres. But to find the radius, how do you find the radius? Yeah. Half it. You divide it by two. So divide it by two. So radius equals five. So what I do is pi times five squared. Okay, and that will give me my answer. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm reliably informed by one of my uh, students that it is 78.54. So I'm going to go 78.5 millimeters squared. So that's telling me the area of the circle for penicillin. So streptomycin, so we know it's 28 divided by 2. So that gives us 14 millimeters. And then we can work out pi r squared, so pi times 14 squared and that equals again my uh, students have just reliably informed me is six, 615.8 millimeters squared so now i have the two areas and you can see the streptomycin is far more um, effective than the penicillin Okay, so the next thing was the uh, sensitivity ring, so the antibiotics, okay, and there were two that have been effective, so this one here and this one here. Now, you, as you can see, the other nothing has happened, there are actually clear zones in those zones, and I'm just going to see which ones they are. So the first one is CX. So that's sofoxin at 30 micrograms, and it, the, the second one is streptomycin. There you go. So again, streptomycin, the one that we had before, and that's at 10 micrograms. And can anyone think why it would be really useful in a hospital situation to use these sensitivity rings when looking at a bacterial infection? So let's say an unknown bacterial infection. So you can use a lot of different um, like medicines at a time. Yeah, so you can test a lot of antibiotics at the same time. So we've got lots of different antibiotics and as a, as a doctor or as a GP or as a, a surgeon, well, a consultant, I can decide though for this bacterial infection, I would use this one here, which in this case is oxygen. So you can see it's most effective, more effective than streptomycin and the others don't seem to kill it. And we know that this bacteria is E. coli. So uh, we know that from our cultures. So you can see how useful that is. And again, um, scientists would use exactly the method that I've used. So they'd look at inhibition zones um, and then work out the effectiveness of antibiotics. Last thing need to do, Okay, so what I have here is an autoclave bag. So this is uh, to dispose of the electric dishes uh, safely. So I don't open them. I don't expose the bacteria. So I'm going to place them very carefully into the bag. So one, two. I don't know where the other one's gone. Where's the other one gone? There it is. Three. Okay. So I place them in the bags, all right, and we are going to seal those up, and they will be autoclave. Now, an autoclave um, basically uses steam under high pressure, and that will destroy all of the bacteria and any other bacteria that are present on the petri dishes. And that is, oh yeah, and then after we've done that, I need to then very carefully take my detergent, there we go, I need to make sure that the whole area is nice and clean. Okay. And what do you think I need to do with my hands at the end? Yep. I definitely need to wash them with soap. Definitely. And I maybe even some, even some disinfectant uh, gel. So there we go. Job done. See you soon.